सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली मॉलडीव से जस्ट हैड एन इलेक्शन रन ऑफ इलेक्शन बिकॉज द फर्स्ट वन वॉज इनकलूसिव फॉर द प्रेजिडेंट दे है डायरेक्ट इलेक्शन एंड इन दिस इलेक्शन दे इज बीन ए government change now you might say oh regime change but no it's not a regime change because when democratically one government replaces the other or one president replaces the other it's not a regime change in that classical sense it's a government change now that is that is an essential part of democracies and what's happened in this case is you will find a lot of commentary you will also find a lot of jubilation on social media by critics of modi government for example or by critics of india overseas that look pro india government has lost out a pro india president has lost out and a pro china president has come into power the thing about politics is and the thing about democracy the thing about democracy is that governments change governments change that is why you might find that bigger powers us is a very good example in fact the best example of this the finest finest i say within quotes and tongue in cheek us is the finest example of a big power actually preferring dictatorial regimes not governments we use regime for dictatorial dictatorial regimes in smaller countries of whose support they seek that's why they've had such good relations in the middle east and in the arab world and that's why that's why they've had such good relations with dictator dictators in southern and latin america and elsewhere in the world pakistan is a very good example pakistan might have some kind of a democracy but the dictators of pakistan are the pakistani army and the americans feel very comfortable very stable in that relationship with pakistan they might have they might see serious trouble when a real democratically elected popular leader comes into power and much as we don't like imran khan that leader could be imran khan and that is not something that the americans would want so that digression was important to explain to you that once your friends in your neighborhood even very small countries with just over half a million people once they have democracy then those democracies can choose people who may not who you may not like and those people can also come into power on an agenda because you you paint so big on the radar screen think of think of how dominant india would be in the maldivian discourse although india is very popular in maldives indian movies indian culture indian clothing maldivians come to india all the time that said india paints so big in the maldivian political radar screen that anti indianism also becomes a very good pulpit to run your politics from which is what the newly elected president mohammad muizi he's done he's 45 years old is very well educated he's got he's got bachelor's masters and a phd in structural engineering from university of leeds so somebody i spoke to somebody well informed i spoke to in male says to me when i asked him is he an islamist so i was told no maybe his father in law was an islamist and that doesn't mean that this man is an islamist he has a beard which might give you the impression that, that he's an islamist but he's really like a little bit like upper class british because that is where he studied so 45 year old has now come into power he has made many promises many promises that will disturb india in the immediate run he said for example that he'll send indian troops away now how many indian troops are there in maldives think about it guess if i'm i'm defying you to guess obviously i mean that it is it's a small number of troops but still think how many indian troops are there in the maldives it's all of 75 troops so all the guesses you made i guess were all incorrect because you may, may have thought in hundreds thousands tens of thousands only 75 troops and why are they there they are not exactly troop troops they are 75 indians in from uniform forces who've been sent to service the two helicopters that were gifted by india to maldives in 2009 by the by the upa government manmohan singh government and a dornier aircraft which has been gifted lately so just to maintain them 
Beyond that, there were some defense agreements signed between India and Maldives and those became a contentious issue because the outgoing president that is Ibrahim Mohammed Soli came, Maldivian names can sometimes get confusing and I'll tell you how confusing in a moment. So Ibrahim Soli, the outgoing president, there was a charge against him that while he signed these defense agreements with India, he did not seek parliamentary appro approval for those agreements, nor did he place those in parliament. Now, I'm sure there is his side of the story on this also, but this is how this campaign ran, that because these defense agreements with India were made behind the back of Maldivian parliament and Maldivian people, there must be something wrong with these. And that's why, that's why this anti-Indianism became a strong campaign point for Muhammad Moidzi, who rode this to power with a good majority. In fact, the final result in the runoff election was he had almost a 9%, 9% margin over the over solely over the outgoing president or over the incumbent. So it was 54% to 45%, which in the Maldives is a very good, strong majority. Now, as he came into power, the two things he said he'll do, first of all, the first thing he said he will do is to release Abdullah Yamin. I told you names in Maldives get to be confusing. So many people, many leaders can have the same first name and in some cases the same second name also. I'll tell you how. So Abdullah Yamin, he's been in jail on corruption charges. He was given an 11-year sentence. So the first thing Mohammed Moizi is doing as the new president <coughs> is to release Abdullah Yamin from jail because Abdullah, ya Abdullah Yamin is from his party. His supporter, when he was president, he had made Maldives lean towards China, obviously because he was reacting or responding to a situation where his predecessor was seen to be close to India or pro-India. So Yamin has been serving a jail sentence and I will go into this business of I'll jail you, I'll jail you, you free me, etc, etc. as we go along with this discussion because Maldives also has a fascinating, fascinating history. So he's been serving an 11-year jail sentence on corruption charges. He's been released and he's been moved to house arrest. And the second thing that Moizi says he's going to do is to remove all foreign military forces from Maldives. What that means is removing the 75 Indian troops from there. Now, it is not just the 75 Indian troops. Maldives, India security relation is much deeper than that. It has become much deeper. So, in 2009, while UPA was still in power, the two governments then decided, this is when Mohammed Nasheed was in power. The two governments then decided to set up some defense cooperation uh, projects in the Maldives because India was already focused on the larger Indian Ocean region. And if, if you see the map of the world, it will show you on your screens where Maldives is positioned. It's really deep down in the Indian Ocean. So it sits astride very important part of the maritime real estate and it's a bunch of islands spread over a long distance right it's a it's a huge huge archipelago at all whatever you call it a large number of islands many of these are uninhabited but remember what we keep on telling you when we talk about south, south china sea and chinese claims that every island also means your own territorial waters and exclusive economic zones so maldives has a lot of that Real estate. So 2009, the process started of setting up some radar stations, 10 radar st stations ultimately on Maldivian islands. These radar stations were to guide Maldivian Coast Guard, also be available to India, obviously. These were to be manned by Indian personnel, but run by, controlled by Maldivian Defense Forces. But Maldivian Coast Guard was to be linked then with the Indian Coast Guard. You know, you can understand the implications of what all of that means. So all of those interests are there. Again, a small naval facility with a harbor and a dock. Not that small also because it is costing $50 million, which has been given by India. That facility is being built on an island, on one of the Maldivian islands, generally called UTF, but it is Uthru Thilha Falu or UTF as it's called. So that facility and port, that dock is be being built there. Rajnath Singh, our defense minister, has been there lately. This, while India was, India is spending 50 million on this, on this facility, India also has the rights to control this or run this for 30 years. 
it's like a build operate transfer i'm oversimplifying it but in 30 years india goes away but 30 years india is present there so we don't know if this if this threat or promise to remove indian troops or all foreign troops is only about the 75 foreign troops sitting here and there maintaining these helicopters or the, or the dornier or will it also mean shutting india out of these facilities if that happens i will be surprised of course the chinese would love to do it but once you come to power usually then you see then you see that then you make a distinction between election promises and charges you make during elections and what you do in real life so what happens now we will see so maldives it has so many islands such a fantastic strategic positioning which sometimes can also be a curse because you know then big powers want you and big powers come and you become big powers playground right now that's a little bit of that is also happening otherwise why would a us secretary of state pompeo in this case visit little maldives that's what happened in the last months of the trump administration because maldives is very much part of the indo pacific strategy and also very much on the playground which quad has designed for itself that said in that small country while we have had many transitions into of power while we have seen many transitions of power through peaceful elections these have not remained entirely peaceful and entirely free of vindictive behavior so if you look at the four presidents four full time presidents that maldives has had so far first of all abdul gayoom mamun abdul gayoom who was president for a long time from 1978 to 2008 and it was under his period that in 1988 maldives faced a coup attempt it was almost a successful coup attempt for that india had sent its commandos and its new il 76s and n 32s that was a newly acquired airlift capacity by the rajiv gandhi government so these commandos had been taken there and also indian navy indian navy led by a little task force led by ins godavari the frigate they had gone and saved abdul gayoom so 78 he took over 88 he faced a big coup but even before that he had faced a bunch of coups so 1988 india intervened and saved him in fact i went out to cover that story with india today i think on the second or third an 32 because the air force then agreed to take some journalists there as things seemed to be in control so the story was that as his house presidential house was surrounded he escaped but he was smart enough to carry with him the handset of his cordless phone those days there were no mobile phones and on his cordless phone he had the number of the duty officer of the indian prime minister's office stored so he called the prime minister's office at night and said i have a problem please help so he was helped after that after that he continued in power in 2003 he won some kind of an election he also set up a party of sorts that was dhivehi rai thunge party he set up a party and he stayed in power power till 2008 after after he lost power came mohammad nasheed now mohammad nasheed came into power he was seen as very friendly to india also he was very modern he had many interesting thoughts he is the one who held that famous cabinet meeting under water to draw attention to global climate crisis right so mohammad nasheed came into power then mohammad nasheed while he was in power he ran into public protests massive public protests as a result of which he resigned he resigned and then he was replaced by his vice president mohammad wahid hasan the maldivian constitution is a bit like the follows a bit like the american system which means a president once elected if something happens to the president president dies president gets incapacitated president resigns as nasheed did then the vice president automatically takes over elections fresh elections will only take place on due date for example if something were to happen to joe biden as we know then kamala harris will become president of the united states so maldives has followed that system so mohammad wahid hasan became vice president again you might say okay Uh, vice president and from nasheed's party but no in the maldivian constitutional system parties are not, not really recognized so you can be from anywhere so mohammad wahid hasan while he was president for a short while he wasn't he wasn't particularly from nasheed's party or beholden to him so nasheed was convicted and sent to jail while 
Muhammad Wahid Hassan was the president. Now, what am I coming to? I am telling you about a cycle of revenge or vendetta, if you call it, or counter revenge, right? So, Gayum loses power in 2008, having survived many coups in the past. And I will bring it back in the story as we go along, because he also did not escape jail. Because I told you that three of the last four presidents have gone to jail and the fourth has just lost power solely. So we don't know what happens. We wish him well, but we don't know what will what will happen. So Nasheed was sent to jail under the government of his successor, his constitutional successor, that is Muhammad Wahid Hassan. Then Muhammad Wahid Hassan, his term ended and Abdullah Yameen now came to power. So between 2013 and 18, Abdullah Yameen was in power. Now I told you that I told you that Maldivian names can be very confusing. First names can be confusing because they, they are repeated. Most people are Muhammad or Abdullah, which you would expect. <laughs> it's an Islamic country. But the second name also it can be confusing. For example, if you see the full second name of Abdullah Yameen, it will be Abdullah Yameen Abdul Gayoom. How did that happen? Because Abdul Gayoom was the president who lost power in 2008 after having been president or the ruler for 30 years. Dictator first and for five years, some kind of a democratic ruler. But for 25 years, a dictator. So how come this guy is also called Abdul Gayoom? That's because they are half brothers. They are they are sons of the same father, but born from different mothers. Maldives is a country of just over half a million people. It's also a very small elite. There is also, also a lot of marrying across families within that elite. And that's why you find that very often adversaries or partners, it doesn't matter. They tend to be related or, or they tend to have been in the same place a lot of the time. So then Abdullah Yameen or Abdullah Yameen Abdul Gayoom. He came into power. He had set up a party called Progressive Party of Maldives. Before that, Nasheed's party, I forgot to mention to you, was Maldivian Democratic Party, which is what solely represented right now. And there's a twist there also. Now, Abdullah Yamin served for five years. That Then he lost power. He had also campaigned on a platform of anti-Indianism. You know, before that, you might remember there was a controversy about Mal Malay Airport. So GMR, the Indian company, had got the contract to build a new Malay airport, but they were also going to, a political issue was made out of the fact that, that they will also levy airport usage charges on citizens of Maldives. So in a democracy or in any free situation, in any political situation, anything can become a controversy. So that became a controversy and that became one of the planks on which Abdullah Yameen then, then built an anti-Indian platform because you know what? anywhere in democracy or dictatorship as we keep saying on our mugs also because politics matters it's politics so he built his politics on anti-indianism he served five years he got very close to china he became a member of china's bri xi jinping came visiting maldives for the first time for a chinese president in 2014 and that was seen then as a clear shift by a maldivian government towards China. That's why when in the next election he lost power and Ibrahim Mohammed Soli came to power with MDP. MDP, as we told you earlier, was Nasheed's party. Now, why did Nasheed not come into power? Because I told you the cycle of vendetta. Because meanwhile, Nasheed had been sent to jail by the government of Mohammed Wahid Hassan. And that jail sentence was for was 13 years. These were serious charges. I will come to those also. So he was ser serving a 13 year jail sentence. Now what happens when you can't be in power or you can't contest because he was because of his conviction, he was also rendered ineligible for contesting. If you can't contest, you put somebody, some murga of yours, which you think is my proxy, right? But once somebody gets elected, you might say, you are my proxy, you are my placeholder, then I am But once you get elected, nobody wants to accept that he was a mere placeholder. So Soli got elected and the expectation on Nasheed's part might have been that Soli will now, will now pardon him and also lift the ban on him. He will then become the president, but no such thing happened. What had happened with Nasheed meanwhile was that he had fallen sick or said he was sick in jail and he went overseas for tra treatment. So he had gone into self-exile in Sri Lanka. Now because solely his own party came into power, he was given a reprieve. He came back in the course of time. 
the ban on him contesting elections was lifted at the same time soli did not say this was not ram chandra ji bhagwan ram chandra ji and his brother bharat that you are going in exile you are, you are leaving your khadaws behind when you come back i'll hand over the th throne to you no such thing happened so nasheed came back he was he had his ban lifted he got a legal reprieve he could contest elections so he did contest parliamentary elections and he did win a parliamentary election in male but by just 43 votes these are small constituencies it was it was an election of 2000 voters but he only won by 43 votes so it did did not look like he had retained his popularity too much but he really was chafing he still thought that he will be given presidency because after all isko to main bitha ke gaya tha he is my murga he is he is my he is my pawn he is my proxy i am within my rights to take claim it back from him but that didn't happen so he said you become the speaker instead now maldives has one more peculiar thing in maldives there is a parliament it's a presidential system but parliament goes for the polls one year exactly one year after presidential elections so now they have a new president they'll have a new parliamentary elections one year from now so in that election he came back he got elected but at the same time he could not become he was not given presidency or prime ministership in frustration he set up a party of his own called the democrats very original it's called the democrats so in the first round of elections this year in the presidential election he contested on his own he, not personally but he put his party he put his party's candidate up that only got 7% of the vote but a message went around that nasheed no longer supports soli's party or soli's candidature and that also damaged soli greatly now nasheed was given 13 years in jail meanwhile while soli was in power again cases were lodged against against abdullah yamin and he was given 11 years in jail i told you three of the four presidents have been given long jail sentences that abdullah yamin is now being released by the new president so this cycle continues in maldives i keep telling you three out of four so you might say abhi do hi bola hai right yamin went to jail and nasheed went to jail who's the third one the so third one is the old gayum the original gayum who had survived many coup attempts etc who had ruled maldives with an iron fist for 30 years between 1978 and 2008 he was given a 19 month jail sentence also during yamin's presidency he was given a 19 month jail jail sentence also for trying to bribe judges for trying to bribe judges to give some kind of a verdict to bring up bring down the government so that sentence also it did not serve a full sentence very soon it became house arrest and in the course of time he became a free man also now his son was arrested as well and once again remember remember that confusion over the names so mamun abdul gayum was jailed by abdullah yamin abdul gayum which means he was jailed by his half brother if you if you're a country only of half a million and a small elite you you do end up you do end up also being vindictive very often with your own family members and that's what happened in this case yamin on the other hand yamin's conviction under the soli government again was on a corruption charge that a billion dollars were found in his account which apparently could not explain why was nasheed given his 13 year jail sentence because the charge against him was that he wanted a judge kidnapped he wanted a judge kidnapped and he asked kidnapped and sacked and he asked his home minister to do so his home minister refused to do it then he asked his defense minister to do so defense minister said i will do it but give me orders in writing these orders are coming all of this is not alleged because a conviction took place defense minister did pick up the judge in the process both were tried and both were convicted so both nasheed and the defense minister went to jail sure enough sure enough when nasheed's own people came to power they let him go so that is the arrest release cycle that maldives has followed through these decades now i told you about that coup in 1988 that i had gone out to cover and i will tell you a little story about that because it suddenly become current because i dis discovered something new and then i let then i let you go so 1988 after the coup was over and indian commandos para commandos had gone there under brigadier balsara if i remember uh indian commandos para commandos and an indian navy they had taken control of the situation i was obviously i was haranguing the armed forces to give me to let me go and see something new something interesting so the navy allowed me 
ride on a helicopter or on a seeking helicopter which took off from the cricket stadium in Male and took me to INS Godavari. Now INS Godavari it is which had, which had chased the boat that the coup leader Abdullah Lutfi was escaping on with 100 plus hostages including a Maldivian minister, cabinet minister and his Swiss wife and lots of foreign tourists. And while the Indian Navy was chasing him on high seas, he even threw a couple of these hostages overboard to say that if you chase me, I'll kill these guys. But the Navy fired a, fired a couple of shots across his bow and he surrendered. So I was also taken on board INS Godavari. Then it was, it was commanded by Captain S.V. Gopalachari. Uh, so I was taken down. I was taken down one of those steel staircases to meet Mr. Lutfi. Mr. Lutfi was there tied and trussed up. They removed his gag just for a couple of minutes so I could have a conversation with him. And two naval commandos were standing by his side. In fact, I keep running into him in Delhi at some of the book events very often. So two naval commandos are standing by his side with automatic rifles waiting for him to make one false step. So I asked him that with one junk boat and a couple of hundred of these Tamil renegades because his so-called fighters were Tamil renegades from an organization called People's Liberation Organization of Tamil Ila, which Prabhakaran LTT had already destroyed. So he had rented them. So I said, with these people, you thought you could become president of an entire country? So he looked me in the eye and he had, he had his wits about him, even in that situation. He said, a country like Maldives, sir, anybody can become president. Now that line has stayed with him. I think it featured in my story then also. I'll share a link of my, of my India Today story published at that time. But what happened to Lutfi? So I was researching this. I asked my friends in Malay that what happened to Lutfi finally. So Lutfi was given a long jail sentence as a coup leader. In the course of time, he also pretended to be sick. Right. And obviously, because some new government came in, which did not have such a big problem with him, he was allowed to go overseas. So he was allowed to go overseas for treatment and he was hiding in exile in Sri Lanka when the Easter bombings took place. When the Easter bombings took place and Sri Lankan authorities started hunting for any foreign Muslims hanging out anywhere, he got scared. As he got scared, he went rushing. Where else? He went rushing to the Maldivian High Commission. And said, Ma'am, Margaya, mujhe bachao, save me. So, Maldivian High Commission, instead of saving him, sent him back to Male and he was sent to jail. So, as we speak, after spending five, seven years outside of jail as a free man, he is now back in jail and it looks like by next year, he, will, he, he would have served enough years for the president to give him a pardon anyway. But given, given that there is a change of government, maybe he will get a pardon right away. So Lutfi, who had his wits about him at that point, has actually outlasted a lot of the people who might have thought that that was the end of this little cheap coup leader in Mali. So once again, what is the lesson? A country, big or small, once it has democracy, it has elections, it gets complexities. All countries have complexities, but democracies, in democracies, the beauty is that you can see those complexities because those complexities come to the fore. And that's exactly what this very significant election result in Maldives has given us the opportunity of looking into.